I'm here in Edenville again today in front of the Edenville Dam as you can see behind me. And today, Michael is going to be removing the seam shovel as you can see right here. Work has already begun. There's a lot of equipment laying around the site here. So let's head on down and see what Michael's plan is for today. All right, I'm here with Michael again today and we're by the seam shovel. Can you kind of tell us what the plan is today and the goal? Well, the goal is to get this to its new home. So we're gonna pop the boom off, like I said before, and then we'll grab the rest of the machine, put it on a trailer. Uh, we got a road cut down through here. We'll drag one trailer down at a time, then back up because we can't get trucks in and out of there because they're just gonna get stuck. So that's it. Good thing we're getting it out of here today too because it was freezing this morning. Yeah, I gotta get it out before it freezes. Yeah. I can't have this thing frozen to ground. Looks like there was maybe just a little bit of ice starting to form down here. Yep. Who all is donating their time today? I know we got a lot of equipment moving around the site today, so. I've got the, I gotta thank a big thanks to uh, Lang Land Clearing who brought the excavator and the dozer down. And they brought the little mini, they brought their John Deere. There's my Hyundai, another John Deere. My nephew's down here again with his Kubota skid steer, so we're, we're pleased to have everybody down here to play. So. Don't try to pronounce this company's name. I'll just put it on the screen. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we won't go through that again. <laughs> so I know you got the steam engines out last time and a couple of the other parts. How are those looking? I know that's one of the critical pieces to get working. I really, uh, I don't think there's going to be no problem rebuilding the steam motors. I think everything is going to be good to go. They're home. They're in the garage right now, soaking in the mixture and. What do you have them soaking in? A uh, mixture of diesel fuel and red hydraulic oil. Okay, and then after today, I know this is going to be going to the Midland Antiques Engine Association. We're going to be unloading it there again today. But what's the plan forward after that? Um, this Monday, I'm going to take it. I'm going to try to power. We're going to get a power washer. Try to get the power washer to clean a lot of this up. We'll get it all all cleaned up and then covered up for the winter. And that'll be it, probably for the steam shovel this year, other than the motors that are in the shop that I'll be working with. Yeah, I plan on following the whole story till you get this thing back up and running. So I'll be posting that on its own channel, on my, on my channel, on its own playlist. So hopefully we can follow this along. What is your plan for your first project to rebuild? Is it just getting the steam engines going? Is it the boiler? Is that any of the other parts that you plan on cutting out this winter? Nothing probably more this winter once we get that, once it's all washed up and gets covered up for the winter. Uh, but then springtime's gonna roll raw. I'll be spending most of my time probably on the on the motors, getting them what I can do and in search of a boiler. And I think I've got a good lead on a boiler. Is the boiler gonna be newly built or? Well, I've, I found a guy that collects vertical boilers, and he thinks he may have one there at a reasonable price, so we're not going to mention any names yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the price will go up. Door, <laughs> so do you have an approximate time frame about how long this is going to take to rebuild yet? I don't know. How long do you think you get married? <laughs> <laughs> that would be nine years. <laughs> All right, we're on, we're on your plan then. <laughs> <laughs> and congratulations on that. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you for your time as well. Do you got any other things you'd like to say to the people watching and any well, other shout outs? Thanks for the support. And uh, like I said, big thanks to Langs and Midland Antique Engine Association for the guys coming out. You guys for coming out. It's a trailer park. I mean, every, it's just been, everything has just gone real well. And this, this is my father and uh, this was his project. And he's here with us to help her go through. All right, sounds great. Thank you, Michael, for your time, and let's get this out of here. All right, thank you. Michael is just going ahead right now and cutting off a few of the bolts that are attaching the boom to the rest of the steam shovel. Then they're going to go ahead, 
lift it out of there with the excavator, put it on the trailer. During this time, Michael is cutting out the bolts that hold the boom in place. You can see a little bit of that molten slag that was falling down. Here's a closer view of Michael using a Broco torch to cut the bolts that are holding the boom in place. You can see he actually is able to shove this rod right through the bolt that's holding it in place and it will melt out the center and he's able to remove it. This was the first time that the bucket of the steam shovel was removed from the pile of dirt in 95 years when the dredge was submerged under the water. Michael took a little bit of time getting this boom balanced before they were able to lift it. And they moved it over onto a trailer and secured it for transport. steam shovel with the boom removed now down in this hole used to be where the bucket used to lay one more big piece mainframe to go because the uh, Midland Antique Engine the association said well we got maybe you got this guy or this guy that'll do it stuff like that I said well I gotta I gotta ask Bill Lang first I mean because he was the one that you know, was gonna help dad so I approached him and he said yeah we'll see what our workload is and so I brought him down here and he was actually absolutely just instantly hooked. So so then the boys, uh, his oldest boy Bill and Dan that are also here helping out. Um, I used to babysit for them when they were kids. So that's all and my mom used to babysit for Bill. So we've known the family for years. So it was it was kinda cool to you know that, that they're involved here. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, if we go down, we go back down around here now, put The smaller excavator was used to dig around the entire frame of the steam shovel so that it was a little bit easier to break it free of the mud and clay that it was submerged in. A larger excavator was then brought in and each one of the four tires were lifted and then blocks of wood placed underneath before setting them back down. This was hoping to break it free of the mud and clay that it was in so that it would be a little bit easier to lift out the frame.
these next few clips coming up, you can see just how hard they are trying to lift the frame of the seam shovel out of this mud. This was the first time that it was actually busted loose from the place that it sat 95 years ago. You can see the steam shovel was a little too heavy for this excavator though. I did talk to the operator a little bit later and he said that he should have been able to lift 12,000 pounds. So this frame weighs over 12,000 pounds. Later on you'll see how they were able to get the steam shovel out of this hole though without being able to lift the entire frame. As they are pulling the steam shovel out of this hole. It took a little while for the back wheels to start to turn. The front ones actually started to turn right away and were busted free. It was at this point coming up here that those back wheels started turning for the first time. Here's the hole that the steam shovel used to be sitting in. There were a few people that were coming out here the next day to metal detect this area and see if they could find anything else. <laughs> After removing a little bit more of the mud, they had to give it one more go to see if they were able to lift the entire steam shovel frame. Not quite though.
Here it is, Steam Shovel finally made it to Midland Antique Engine Association. It's gonna be the final resting place for it right here during the rebuild process.
fortunate to have him here too today while we pulled this thing out. And he told me that you know what to look for, and he said if this stuff is good, you can build a steam shovel. So, wow! And yeah, how long has this been down here for? Ninety-five years. Ninety-five years. So, what can you tell me about the history of this? I mean, how did it end up there? There's several stories, uh, but the one we've probably been going with the most of is that it got stuck, or something happened, it got stuck, and they couldn't get it out, and they decided to they decided to go hunting, and then when the, they started filling the lake when they went hunting, and when they came back, there was too much water in there to get the crane back out, so they it was left. And now, now, who who owns this shovel, or owned it rather? <laughs> There was a contractor in Beaverton that owned it, and I tracked down. My father had it signed over from his son, and then uh, I got it signed over just to make it kind of legal or whatever. It was signed over from his grant, from a grandson, to give me permission to take the grave. All right. Now, it is uh, you said that there there's one of these that's in operation. It's actually uh, being used. It's just it's at a showground in Pennsylvania, and he's just got it there, and that's where he takes. Oh, uh, they have a show twice a year, I think it is, and they'll, they'll demonstrate the, the crane will run them out there. Uh, and this is going to end up in a museum, is it? It's going to the Midland Antique Engine Association on Meridian Road, south of 20, and it'll be put on display there where everybody can come out and see it and then watch as we, because my hopes and dreams are to make it dig again. All right, very good. So tell me a little bit about, like, just obviously technology has changed over the last hundred years I mean uh, what can you tell me about like the everyday operation of something like this well I mean it was a two-man operation because you had one person filling the, the boiler to keep it keep your steam up and you had the operator there to uh, run the machine so there was sometimes probably as many as three or four guys you know because they, they would get stuck quite frequently as I was told so you got people putting blocks underneath the wheels and it's faster than a shovel and a wheelbarrow, I guess. Yeah. Well, what, what's involved in that? Just logistically, is it difficult to uh, to have an operation like this? To, to have it operate again? Well, no, to, to dig it up out of a lake bed. Yeah, I know I've, there's some videos out there that uh, you've, I've seen, you know, other stuff that's been pulled back from the water. Uh, Bob's, I believe, was out in the middle of the woods, so he didn't, you know, she said, never seen anything quite like this yet. Uh, what, what can you tell me about the, the condition of this? Obviously it's covered in, in uh, mud and dirt. I mean uh, when you clean this up is this going to be like a, you know a, an almost new looking thing? I'm hoping so. I got the three steam motors at my house. Uh, I opened all three of them up just to get a quick visual to see if they're because that was my, my key thing. If the, if the steam motors are good you can build a shovel. And I opened them up, and right now everything looks good, you know, good enough to make them go again. So that'll be this winter's project. Right now, let's get this out, get it on site, and then uh, get her, All right. hopefully rebuild her. So what is involved in restoring something like this? A lot of time. <laughs> There's going to be uh, some money involved in it. Uh, I got the couple of my sons, Mike and Shane here, so if I don't finish it up, then uh, they'll have to put my picture of a, on their shirt and finish up the crane. <laughs> you think it'll take that long to do? I'm basing it off of uh, Jordan's life here. It took him nine years to get married, so it'll take me nine years to finish up. Uh-huh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so, uh, you know, there's a lot of people out here. I mean, what, what kind of uh, feedback have you gotten from uh, folks around here? So far, it's all positive. We've had a couple people concerned with you know, why we're taking it out. Originally, they wanted it left in here for a fish habitat. And I pleaded my case to them that it's senseless to leave a piece of history like this with only two known in existence to leave, them, to leave it here. And you also said you know, there's some money involved. Is there, do you have like a, a sponsor, somebody uh, helping to finance this? We're setting up at the Midland Antique Engine Association. We're going to, we're, they're working on it right now is on the page. There's going to be a, a PayPal button where contributions can be made to that and it'll go right to the crane for the restoration of the, of the steam shovel. So it's Michigan Antique 
Uh, if you go to their Facebook page, it's probably the easiest way to link up to it. And then I've also got a Facebook page for the Steam Shovel. It's Wixom Lake Steam Shovel on Facebook where you can see a lot of these videos are being posted up to that. And, uh, and check them out. Now, how is it, what does it mean to you personally to, to be a part of this? It, it was kind of emotional, especially when I put the shirt on with my dad on the front of it. It was kind of like, you know, this, I was 11 years old and we were in a boat looking for this. So it's been 45 years for me. Um, it is, to have people turn out and just even want to do this to film it, I mean, I made the mention in one of the videos and stuff like that, you know, I laid awake in bed and I didn't know if anybody would be or anybody would want to come and help. And the, it's been very gratifying for the people that have been showing up to to help out. Okay. And I, I got to thank my wife for tolerating all this. It's been awesome. Anything at all that maybe I forgot to ask you like that? No, if I can just thank the contractors that are here. Um, put a thanks in for Lang Lang Clearing for bringing their Hyundai, their John Deere's, and my nephew Dan coming up with his Komatsu skid steer and helping us out. And you know, big thanks to you guys for, for doing this. Very cool. Thank you so Thank much. You. Appreciate it. How do you think it went? Happy with today? Yep. At least a lot of work ahead of me. Right. At least it made it to its resting place without yeah. anything really getting After damaged. Five years underneath ground, she finally got transported someplace. <laughs> wow. Power washed up. It'll start looking a little bit better tomorrow once you get some of the stuff. Oh power washed yeah, up. you power wash this. This looks nice. A little bit of paint. <laughs> Brand <laughs> new. Spray some WD-40 on it. Yeah. You're gonna have to buy a summer home up here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> I told you before, I want lots of pictures. I want, as your work progresses, I want lots of pictures. Oh yeah, you, know, you probably get some dogs free now from the unlock the wheels. Hey, <laughs> when they started rolling, I thought, shit, you know, that's that's great. Yeah, if we could have just got her to swing, but I mean, there's a good chance that once we get a power washed up, we could get. Yeah, well, there's just so much crap. Yeah. Of them. Zebra muscle, thing. Yeah. I never saw one of them before. I didn't know what a zebra muscle was. You gonna take some with you? No, I don't want to. They look <laughs> like they're all dead. Well, yeah, that's what they do in the bottom of the lake, anyways. Yeah. Okay, now. Oh, you know, I want I want a progress report once in a while. Oh, well, you know, you know, some, <laughs> some pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Don't laugh. <laughs> Don't laugh, you know. I'm not saying I want one tomorrow, you oh, know. But let me you call know. you. I'll call you tomorrow when I get... <laughs> I'll, call, I'll definitely get a picture Monday when I get every power washed up, so... Yeah. And you're still going to go tomorrow and look with a metal detector and yep, see... Yep, we're going to go digging that hole and... You might be able to find those bearings. I wish. I mean, that is, that's a... That, that would be neat when I those caps find them. Like, oh, man. Yeah. How does it fasten in the front? Where does it hold it off the pivot? There has been, there's got to be two of those cats. another one up the front there. But I don't see where it would have... Well, I up. looked too, and I, I couldn't get underneath there enough to... I wasn't going to lay on the ground. Oh, and I mean, it's also, it's like it's two blocks, it's bolted through. Yeah, it's I thought that it was on the trailer that I could see okay. underneath there. That's thing you probably chucked loose. I did. You thought it would hold up pretty tight to where that yeah. drive is. Like well, it has to be held up tight. That's what I mean. Yeah, you know. Because when we took ours off, you know, and I put it back on, you know, I had to make... Some shims and stuff to get it up there. See, yeah, it's weak. Yeah, not over where there's a parts one at down in Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know where there's a parts. It's, oh, yeah. a, it's all part I right now. I mean, the, the house is on a trailer well, already. Yeah, I can just go down and get it. Look onto that and take over. <laughs> There's still grease in this grease. Yeah, yeah there was okay. a couple other ones on the yeah. on the. On the motor. That's probably why it didn't want to swing. Well, you didn't turn them. Didn't. Don't mean you didn't go around and turn all of them. <laughs> there was actually one on the, um, I think it was on the hoist motor. And that's what I did with the uh, cam rods are at to run the valves. Yeah. And that's what I did them. I thought I was spraying WD-40 and kind of getting everything all loose and took one of those cups and I was like, well, that's still got some in it. And crank, crank, crank. And yeah. It started coming out the side. Yeah. It's like, well, there we go. I, I seen one of the brass plates that go on the one 
engine was laying here. Down I got it in the truck, but okay. all the all the engines got plates okay. in them. So okay, okay, that one must have been an old one. Yeah, it looked like it was wore pretty good. I was actually using it for a scraper at first because I think that I, it must have been like a toolbox here. Yeah, this is where I yeah. found all the nuts and bolts okay. and all kinds of other fasteners and stuff. Okay, and I found that brass slide okay. in there for the motor, and it's yeah. like. Yeah, this is good for getting zebra muscle <laughs> up. I don't know yeah. what it's for. You don't know it's what it's for, <laughs> yeah. Because I couldn't tell yeah. what it was on when it was on the motors in the back. And you know, we did get some extra, and they were in the toolbox of the brass for on the engines. Uh, you know, they're on a taper, and you've got to screw when, yeah. when you want to take them up. You loosen the lock nut, and you screw it down, and that draws that up and makes it tighter on the on the crank for the oh, okay. engine. Mm -hmm. yep. And we did have a couple... That, uh, for a pattern, you know, to get to get it made. Uh, well, like I said, I'm not the not the brightest guy in the world, but I know how to copy. I know there's one to, well, one <laughs> <Yeah>. to copy. <laughs> <laughs> so this spring we'll be down there with the tape measures when it comes for the house time, and we'll be, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everything on here, eight foot, is all you need for the wood. Nothing any longer to do the. Now I don't know how you're going to do your your house. But we made ours to where we could lift it off. I'll, I'll definitely do the same yeah. thing on this. I mean, because this might even be a project that we could even get going on yeah. once I got the dimensions. Yeah. We, I mean, we can fabricate up the house. Exactly. And I've got the straps, and I, you know, like I said, I'm, yeah, we can. I mean, that, that's the way we wanted to make it. It wasn't that way, but we made it so we could just lift it up off, and uh, like if you're going to work on the boiler. If you have to get it out, you know, you just lift the house off and you can yep. get out the boiler. If you want to change the boiler. Well, it's funny. I'll have to send you a picture. We built a float for my wife's work. She works at a dentist's office, and the theme was know, movies or something like that. So we made the Molar Express, and it's got a big molar on it. And it will be ready to take some hot dogs off the gold iron grill up here pretty quick if you're hungry. Okay. <laughs> okay. And yeah. So anyways, this uh, float we built, I put an arched roof on it yeah. and everything else, and I built it on a hay wagon. Okay. And that's where we yeah. pulled it in the freight, stuff like that. And I'm sitting here looking at this, and I got the art, I got the, the truss, the trusses off this, and I'm going, yeah. They're going to work? This yeah, is yeah, the, yeah, this is the, work. Yeah. I said, that damn shed I got out here is the same size as the house that goes on here, so hey, Yeah, no, you're already I'm done half, to start. I'm half done. It's an OSB, and. You're already started. Yeah. And my roof has got, it's fiberglass, so I got indoor lighting. Yeah, okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. Hey. No, it'll be, uh. It'll be a little bit, but I mean, yeah. it's it's yeah. out now, and oh yeah, that was the main thing, right. getting it out of where it was without busting without, anything, you know, destroying and, uh, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, because you know, I'm gonna ask got it out, nobody and, got hurt. And you already, yeah, that's right, and yeah, that's a big thing. <laughs> you got the engines, you know, and yeah, because that was a that was a good day when we just because originally we just I wanted to get the boiler off because I was afraid that that frame. And there was only that one tie bar that was still good, yeah, it was and still it was it was so rotted out. I was afraid to dip. Yeah. If it would let go, I mean that boiler's just gonna yeah. flop off, and it's gonna rip right. off the back it's part of the frame. Yeah. So we got that off, and it's like, well, well we're going. Let's yeah. let's do a little bit more. So we started torching here, and started torching there, yeah. and started plucking off more motors. And it was like, <laughs> wow, we did pretty good. We, we got, got done pretty good. You got yeah. them all off. We got them all off. The yeah. boiler off, and good. Do you, do you got the turnbuckles for the rods? Yeah, he said they're in rough shot. shape. They're yeah, they're gonna have to. And I don't know, you know, uh, ours were rusted. And I thought, I looked everywhere to try to find turnbuckles that big. I couldn't find any that size, you know, they're pretty long, yes. you know. So we just blasted them, cleaned them up, and they were good enough, they work okay. Yeah, there's a couple, I mean, one of, one of them, the web is just really, well, really yeah, thin. Yeah. I, mean, you so know, I figured if I had to, is you always get a, uh, you know, a block of steel, and you know, mill at the center of it. And yeah. Well, you can. Yeah, you could make. Well, where's Ed? He can make some turnbuckles. He got a CNC mill marine machine oh, yeah, shop. Hell yeah. <laughs> Get him started now. Get him in measurements. <laughs> he was already pumping yeah. me out. He came over and looked at the. Danny brought him over to see what I had at the house there. He was interested in. Yeah. So he was already pretty stoked up already. Well, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Vex, if these were fine threads, we'd have them. Yeah, yes, that works. Those are just like the studs we use in the stone grinders. Yeah. Oh, there's oh, a yeah. fine thread is on the one side. Of course, on the other. <clears throat> You're not going to find anything fine thread on this. <laughs> no <laughs> metric <laughs> either. No <laughs> metric. But metric sockets no do work thread. on the rusted and nuts. Almost all the bolts are square heads. <laughs> yep. And the nuts were square heads. Now, I see some stuff that they have had apart and they replaced with, you know, newer. Well, some of the stuff isn't even under the standard 
bolt size. I mean, no, no, just made no, no, they're not. When you make, if you're going to make your piston rods and that, they're they're not a standard, you know, thread. Yeah, they just chase yeah. them. They just chase them in a lathe. Yeah, they're not a standard whatever thread. Whatever threads per inch they uh, felt like making, I guess. <laughs> what shift it was? No, that's all. <laughs> right, exactly, you know. Yeah, because you can't match it up. You have to make it. Well, that's I mean, sure. that was one of the selling points of keeping it. I thought, you know, when I laid there in bed, it was like, you know, what do you need to do to mix it? I mean, my machine shop at home is probably way better than what they had in... Yeah. Oh, my, yeah. In 1900. Yeah. There wasn't a flat belt yeah. driven all everywhere around. <laughs> But you know, and this would give me. That's why I said my. I got a bad habit of buying my wife birthday presents and Christmas presents that yeah. I can use, so she might be getting a new lathe. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you got her from this yeah. birthday! You yeah. got her a shovel. Well, yeah, where's the bow in this? Beth, man, happy anymore. birthday! <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't ask for anything more. Now, how many women can say they got a shovel for their birthday? <laughs> well, I think she's got a rake before, <laughs> <laughs> and a mower, a lawnmower maybe. <laughs> Yep, I think we'll take this and uh, go to Discount Tire and we'll put some 22s on it. <laughs> Thanks for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video. Also make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next videos I will be posting and leave your questions, comments, and suggestions below. As always, I just want to give a massive thanks to the people who support me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of your contribution to keeping this channel going. Thank you.